Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Asian Impact Webinar Series of Asian Development Plan. Research in Action. This afternoon promises to be an interesting panel discussion on the presentation of the survey of MSMEs in Indonesia and how they have been coping with the pandemic. We will start with welcoming remarks from Pa Said Zaidansia, officer in charge of the Asian Development Bank's Indonesia Resident Mission and Deputy Country Director. Over to you, Pa Said. Thank you, Henry. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and very warm welcome to the 30th Asian Impact Webinar, which will discuss how smaller firms in Indonesia survive one year into the pandemic. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize and welcome our esteemed panelists. They are Bapa Edri Satria, Deputy Minister for Micro Enterprises, Ministry of Cooperatives and Small and Medium Enterprises, the Republic of Indonesia. We also have Bapa Adi Budiarto, Budiarso, who is the head of the Center for Financial Services Policy at the Fiscal Policy Office of the Ministry of Finance, the Republic of Indonesia. And of course, uh, Ibu Sinta Wijaya Kamdani, who's the coordinating vice chairwoman of the Indonesian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, or Kadid. In this webinar, we will discuss a very important research led by my colleague, uh, Sigehiro uh, Sinozaki, our senior economist, on the impact of COVID-19 on micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises and the policy actions that can be taken uh, during and post-crisis. I do not want to preempt the discussions, but I can tell you that the key findings of this research will certainly be valuable for ADB to inform our ongoing support to the government of Indonesia to alleviate the impact of the pandemic on public health, livelihood, and the economy. Similarly, I hope that you will find the findings and analysis from, the, from this research useful, including as a timely resource for evidence-based policy design on MSME development, particularly during these extraordinary times. So without further ado, I wish us all a very rich and productive discussions. Thank you. Henry, back to you, please. Thank you, Pa Said. Let us now welcome Pa Shigehiro Shinozaki to present the results of the year-long survey of MSMEs in Indonesia. Over to you, Pa Shigehiro. Okay, so thank you, Henry and Said, and also good afternoon to everyone. So it's my pleasure to talk about MSME survey findings in Indonesia. Uh, just to hold a minute, uh, I will upload my material shortly. All right, so we have actually the monitor this uh, MSME business environment and the policy interventions uh, from these uh, beginnings of the pandemic. So identified in March, 2020 in selected Asian countries. So, so far, uh, three surveys were conducted in Indonesia in March, April, 2020, so August, September, 2020, and so March, April, 2021. So today, so I'd like to present some major findings from a series of the surveys in Indonesia. Uh, for the convenience sake, I compare to two data points, so March, April, 2020, and 2021, uh, to assess the impact on MSMEs one year after the outbreak. Uh, for your information, a full-scale analysis will be uh, presented so in the forthcoming Asia SIB Monitor 2021, so volume two, uh, to be launched in October 2021. All right, so uh, let me firstly look at this profile of MSMEs in the so latest survey so conducted in March, April 2021. So in this survey, we received uh, 2,509 complete responses uh, from MSMEs nationwide. The survey was conducted online, so with support from the so Indonesia's Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Cooperatives and SMEs, uh, CADIN, so Chamber of Commerce, so, and the local consulting firm, uh, Academica. Uh, the surveyed MSMEs were mostly micro enterprises and sole uh, proprietorships are typically representing informal firms and uh, concentrated on Java areas. Uh, they were largely engaged in distributive trade, accommodation and food services, so including the so tourism sectors. 
So around half of respondents were young startups operating up to five years. So, and also women-led MSMEs. And 28% were engaged in online selling of products or e-commerce. Uh, only less than 2% of respondents were involved in global supply chain or export import business. So in my presentation, I use unweighted data, uh, but weighted data analysis, so based on BPS sampling frame, so will be uh, prepared separately. All right, so uh, first, business environment. Uh, one year after the outbreak, uh, business environment of MSMEs has improved moderately. So in March, April 2020, around half of MSMEs uh, suspended their operations relatively soon after the virus outbreak. Uh, but in the same period of uh, 2021, uh, the share of MSMEs that temporarily closed the business decreased sharply uh, to 4.8% on average. So uh, businesses have started reopening. So this signals that Indonesia has moved to the recovery stage of the economy. Uh, but the downside risk remains. A drop in domestic demand on MSME products and services uh, has expanded further uh, from 31% of MSMEs in 2020 to 61% in 2021. So meanwhile, uh, micro and small firms uh, that reported a better business environment than before the so outbreak increased. So mostly so due to high demand on essential so daily goods and services, including the so food and the healthcare so products. So MSME sales and the revenue so dropped sharply in March 2020 and deteriorated so further so in so April 2020. So due to so increase the business closures. So this condition has largely so improved in March, April 2021. So standing at 5% of MSMEs on average. So however, 22% uh, of MSMEs still continued uh, to face uh, more than 30% revenue drop in uh, 2021. So uh, more so pronounced in small enterprises. So uh, for employment condition, as you see in the left-hand side, MSMEs that uh, reduced employees, uh, share price decreased uh, one year after the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, regardless of farm size. So most MSMEs uh, reported uh, no change of employment in March, April 2021. So this suggests that so employment by MSMEs is returning to, to normal. Uh, but uh, please take note uh, that 55% of micro enterprises were self-employed, so with no employees, so which are excluded in this figure. So when looking at these details in this right-hand side, so micro and small enterprises with temporary staffing cut so decreased sharply to between the March, April 2020 and 2021. So work from home so was not a feasible option for MSMEs at the beginnings of the pandemic. But one year after this pandemic occurred, uh, work from home arrangements uh, has uh, gradually spread so among MSMEs, so especially so micro enterprises. So at the time of the pandemic began, so large portion of MSMEs, uh, saying so 56% on average, suspended wage payments to employees. Uh, but uh, one year after, uh, those with no wage payments uh, decreased sharply uh, to average 21% so of MSMEs. So also the share of MSMEs cutting so over 30% of wage uh, decreased largely. So except the medium-sized enterprises. So for financial condition of MSMEs, uh, they faced a serious lack of funds at the beginnings of the pandemic. And it became as a big barrier to retaining so their business, uh, particularly in micro enterprises. Uh, but this condition has tangibly improved one year after the outbreak. So as you see, so MSMEs with already no cash and savings 
uh, decreased sharply so during March, April 2020 and 2021, so regardless of farm size. So in addition, uh, those who reported enough cash and savings to maintain business at the time of the survey, so largely increased so during the same period. So however, so working capital shortage in uh, three to six months uh, has risen among uh, MSMEs in the year so of the pandemic. So in general, MSMEs have uh, not changed their so normal approach to raising funds so even during the COVID-19 crisis. They mostly rely on uh, their own funds so, and uh, borrowing so from family, relatives, and friends. Yeah, okay. So uh, these conditions remain the same so one year after the so, outbreak. Uh, but uh, uh, their dependence on informal financing has decreased. So while so their access to bank credit so, uh, uh, so has gradually so increased so from uh, 1% uh, to 1% of MSMEs in 2020 to 12% in 2021. So now this prolonged pandemic is so making this downside risk of this economic growth so at the national level. So our surveys have to, uh, monitored of what actions MSMEs would take when the pandemic so further continues. So at the beginnings of the pandemic, uh, loan repayments and tax payments uh, were top concerns among MSMEs. But one year after the outbreak, their willingness to ask financial institutions to defer loan repayments uh, actually is decreased. So while uh, they are uh, considering the further layoff uh, to so manage cost for business, so given this uh, prolonged pandemic. All right, so uh, through after the years of the pandemic, MSMEs have strongly desired debt finance assistance so from the government. So in particular, uh, most MSMEs wanted uh, concessional loans, uh, including zero interest rate and collateral free loans. So however, in, mid, uh, in March, April 2021, uh, their willingness to take concessional loans diminished as MSME's access to bank credit improved, uh, which was supported by the debt restructuring, uh, reduced interest rate, and also special guaranteed loan programs for MSMEs. Uh, this is about non-finance related policy measures. In March, April 2021, a subsidy for business recovery, so cash transfer, uh, and the so grants to uh, support business operations were the top priority uh, policy measures uh, MSME is desired. Uh, actually, the 68% of MSMEs strongly uh, wanted this. So meanwhile, debt finance assistance ranked the second in 2021. Uh, through after the years after the outbreak, MSMEs also desire the comprehensive information platform on government assistance programs. So, uh, actually, the uh, so forty eight percent of MSMEs strongly wanted this in twenty twenty one. Okay, so uh, our follow up survey so also asked MSMEs of what kind of the government assistance uh, they have received. So as you see, so left-hand side, uh, the usage of the present government assistance was so limited uh, at the time of the survey in March, April, 2021. So among others, uh, the productive assistance for MSMEs. So uh, in Bahasa, so Ban, uh, Ban, Ban Tuan, so President so Usaha Mikro, so what is the most popularly utilized, uh, but only 22% of MSMEs use this scheme. So as indicated in right-hand side, MSMEs recognize usefulness of each government program. So indicating 43% to 78% of MSMEs reported very useful so, or so just simply uh, useful, uh, but they also largely unrated uh, the government so programs so marked in gray, so indicating 20% to 49% of MSMEs reported just neutral.
All right. So uh, the Indonesian government has provided exemptions from this income tax article 23, so or PP23 uh, for MSMEs. So our photo app survey, so also reviewed MSME's usage of this program. So as you see, so some 58% of MSMEs reported that uh, they were eligible for uh, the exemption uh, from the PP23. However, only around 11% applied to this program. The main reason was they didn't know the procedure to apply. So enhancing this dissemination of government programs is very much critical uh, for efficient and effective support to MSMEs affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and also government quarantine measures. All right, so just uh, so quickly uh, to sum up. So Indonesian economy, so would gradually shift to this recovery stage, so towards this end of 2021. Uh, but uh, it is accompanied with downside risks of this economic growth uh, caused by this prolonged this pandemic. So throughout the years of the pandemic, MSMEs have con uh, continued to face sharp drop in demand and revenue. So working environment in MSMEs has improved so with limited wage cut and also promoted the work from home arrangement. A serious no cash condition of MSMEs has also improved, but uh, their working capital shortage in three to six months would be a uh, concern in the future. So concessional loans were highly desired by MSMEs, uh, but their willingness so diminished so as access to bank credit improved. Instead, so business subsidies was the top policy measures uh, desired. Uh, but in reality, the usage of present government assistance is limited. So taking it into consideration, the establishment of a comprehensive information platform on government assistance programs will be required to improve this condition. The impact of COVID-19 is uh, different by type of farm operations, uh, farm size, and business sector. So the government will need to further strengthen phased approach and differentiated policy measures with considering ways not to broad national budget. And ideally, so instead of subsidies, so having more public private sector coordination and a market-based approach will be worth consideration for business support programs. So it should address creating the base of innovative entrepreneurships uh, conducive to the economic bounce back and providing some more growth capital to them by making the best use of capital markets. So assistance for digital transformations of MSME's business, so especially informal sectors, is also a policy priority uh, post-COVID-19. Okay. All right, so, uh, so lastly, so this is just for your information, uh, for your reference. As mentioned, so we are currently preparing this new edition of Asia SME Monitor 2021. So including a special chapter for COVID-19 impacts on MSMEs one year after the outbreaks in selected Asian economies, uh, which is to be launched in October this year. Okay, so I will stop here. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shige, for those uh, interesting and significant findings. Uh, just a reminder to the audience, the MSP, MSME Monitor of ADB has a wealth of data and analysis. And uh, for those of you with strong interest in MSMEs, it would be highly recommended. Uh, let us move on to uh, Adi Budiarso, uh, who will discuss by, uh, assistance programs to MSMEs especially financial assistance. Over to you, Padi. Thank you so much, ADB. Thank you so much, Mr. Sigihiro Shinosaki-san for excellent presentation. I do believe we need to scrutinize and follow up uh, with these findings. Uh, particularly, I would like to address uh, three things in my presentation or my comment today. First is on the policies to handle COVID-19 and accelerate the economic recovery. The second is on how uh, the government support the MSMEs during COVID pandemics. I think this also in line and confirms some of the findings that Mr. Sikhiro already presented. 
And the last but not least, I think the most important one that we currently still working is on the structural reform uh, initiative to strengthen the participation of the financial sectors to support MSMEs in the future. First, I would like to focus on the uh, next the policies to handle COVID-19. As you may already aware, in during the uh, uh, contraction in the last three quarters, the quarter two this year, Indonesia has been reached 7.1% growth. It means signifies the collaboration between macro, fiscal, monetary, and monetary, and also micro prudential policies uh, response. Even though during the PPK KM Darurat uh, this month, probably there will be a bit of uh, pressure in the growth in the next quarter. But uh, we do believe that this is only temporary. Let's focus on the slide six currently. The government support to MSMEs uh, immediate response currently uh, comprising several programs. And all pen program is around, uh, for SME is around 20%. The findings shows that two thirds of the businesses has received the government support. So this is quite important. The core, for example, this government subsidy, and then in, uh, some other area uh, to support the MSMEs has been quite uh, effective. Uh, the condition for MSMEs during the transition in revenues, yeah, this is a, some of the findings, but for sure, Mr. Sigihiro, 70% of our MSMEs are non-inclusive in the financial sector. That's the main uh, foundation also the structural problem that currently we saw in the MSMEs in Indonesia. Let's continue to slide nine. In this slide, next slide, yes. Uh, we'd like to seek on the support for MSMEs to accelerate the national economic recovery. As you may already aware, the most uh, effective one is on the ultra micro financing. And also we provide guarantee on the program. Uh, the <clears throat> in addition to the grant, loan sub interest subsidy, working capital guarantee, as well as the uh, all of the programs, uh, government tax and MSMEs as well. The, the financing through the uh, channel for the guarantee has been reached uh, quite uh, uh, positive uh, response from the SME currently. And we would like to also prolong almost all of the program in this year. Let's continue to the slide 12 now. The following the structural reform in addition to the PEN program of Indonesia, the government currently uh, has been launched the initiative to have omnibus law in the financial sector. This is actually the one that we would like to address in addition to the uh, current problems of MSMEs is on the how to improve the uh, deepening of the financial market in the short and even the long run. And also easily accessible financial instrument to not only MSMEs, but also to business. We'd like to improve the efficient and the competitiveness of industry in the financial system, as well as we'd like to improve the risk associated uh, with it, management, mitigating of the risk, as well as the improving the law enforcement and consumer protection. And on the slide uh, 14, so this is what we call in the ideas on how to improve more uh, structural reform for MSMEs particularly. As you may already aware, this reform comprising almost all laws in the financial system, which is all already outdated. And we would like to welcoming the FinTech influence in the economy the improving the role of SMS and ME, as well as the uh, digitalization. So all of the agenda is actually will be uh, in quite in line with the uh, Mr. Sigiro mentioned about the digitalization and how to expand the role of the financial sector to support the industry. Uh, most of the MSME now are non-inclusive and we would like to use the digitalization to accelerate for the financial inclusion of the uh, SMM, small medium enterprise. In the slide 15, as you may already aware, next slide. So in 2022, Indonesia will become the presidency of G20. And 
most importantly, we would like to address here is how then Indonesia presidency can improve or can strong uh, support the greater vulnerability of communities, including SMS and is uh, across the disruption of the both domestic and global supply chain uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Utilization of digital-based financial intermediation, as well as the strengthen by open finance and public data infrastructure is quite key, in, uh, quite important to better embrace MSMEs to encourage productivity, supporting the inclusive economy and the financial system. Um, not to mention the importance of the green or the risk associated with the climate change. The foundation for the to support of the sustainable finance also address the importance of Indonesia uh, taking more advantage on our uh, demography dividend from 2022 to 2035. So Indonesia very keen to support the industry of the pension and insurance to collect more uh, contribution from the people. So that's why one among other thing is all to uh, improve the resiliency and the stability of the system through improving the capacity of the national uh, to support with sustainable finance. So sustainable finance will support also the sustainable growth and inclusive growth as one of the pillars of the G20 Indonesia in the future, which uh, indicate the team will be recovered together and recover stronger. Overall, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like very keen to work closely with ADB to not only uh, review on the finding, the findings, but also work on the uh, quite important points that will be important for us to uh, do the next step, which is how then we can try to uh, rearrange, redesign the future uh, better system for supporting Indonesia economy inclusive growth, uh, while we also combating the pandemic, as well as the strengthening resiliency of the MSMEs, as well as support their uh, uh, businesses through the channel of the financial sector uh, roles in the economy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Adi. Uh, it's heartening to see that the government is looking forward to the recovery and the post-pandemic phase in order that the economy not only survives, but also thrives. Uh, at this point, uh, I would appreciate it if pa Adi could uh, answer briefly a follow-up question regarding what financial assistance should be strengthened further, as well as what assistance would be needed to revitalize MSME businesses and how to implement it. Over to you, yeah. Paolo. Okay. Let's go to the slides number six, yeah? Yeah. Basically, the government... Uh, Performing that all of the program in 2020 will be continuing in the 2021 until 2022. The game changer will be the uh, reform. So basically that the uh, one government already did it. And the next challenges would be in the 2023, where the uh, total uh, potential for us to come back to the maximum deficit 3% will must be reached by that year. But on our all of the program, uh, like Pasigiro indicated, some some of them they have very struggled with the with the support of the government. But our uh, evaluation is currently two thirds of the most of the MSMEs have been uh, you know successfully get access to the to the uh, support of the government support. Uh, the, on the next slide, please. So that's what we uh, indicated. In the, all of the program here, as you may already indicated, all of the beneficiaries tend to be increasing. Yeah. Some, some of them are quite okay with the, like, uh, the ultra micro financing, but we continue to support all of them. So basically there's, there's no reduction on it, but even we would like to prolong the support through some of the mechanisms such as the guarantee, uh, the micro business grant, as well as the president support I mentioned about the uh, continuing of the support for the most vulnerable one, which is 40% of the population. Thank you very much, Pa'ad. And now we will turn to Pa'edi to discuss further the measures that the government is undertaking to support MSMEs. Over to you, Pa'edi. Thank you, Pa'ad. Uh, 
with you, Pak Eddie. Yeah, I don't have my specific slide actually because time limitation. But basically, what Pak Sige, uh, Sige San, and Pak Adi uh, delivers uh, this afternoon to us shows that uh, in most of the policy taken by the government, uh, looks like we are on the right track and hopefully on the right direction with the right speed. I mean, we have to uh, come up with a much uh, more speed, I mean. So basically, uh, we are uh, from the MSME's office uh, uh, really uh, try to help all of the player in the MSME's. Uh, I mean, uh, from from the policy, from the action in the in the grass road, from the government office, and from the war room, the kiosk, we try to really help uh, work all out with the some. Uh, some tools and some programs. Basically, uh, we still continue with the, as mentioned by Pa Adi before, with basic uh, items inside the pen program, right? Uh, among others, subsidi uh, bunga, uh, uh, interest subsidy, and also for the grants from for, from the presidential uh, grant, presidential aids, yeah, we call it BEPUM. Of, of, of course, we still have the for the tax uh, borne by the government, and right now uh, we are trying hard to see to find out how we gonna uh, make it uh, more available fund uh, for, for the for the micro, and so that we are now planning uh, under the uh, under the PPM. I mean the 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 lockdown uh, situation uh, we, we try also to to launch a new program uh, but basically will done will be done by the by our uh, uh, for our security uh, i mean for for the ministry of uh, uh, defense and also the the, the police uh, will directly uh, go to to the kiosk to warung to the to the to the people and and if they are not uh, covered up by the BEPUM program with any specific other aid, they then uh, will be eligible to to have one 1.2 million rupiah for out of of them. So this is basically uh, we are now uh, uh, figure out uh, to to really help uh, people in the the ultra micro uh, micro especially. So, in, among other things, we still have to uh, uh, keep doing the the what we call it the the capacity building of the of the uh, micro uh, with the sum of training and uh, specific uh, program to help them uh, onboarding to the digital platform. So that uh, the, if they cannot uh, use the regular market of, uh, because of the limitation, they, they can be uh, onboarding uh, with the, our digital platform like Gojek, we have here, Grab, and any other platform to sell out uh, their, uh, their, their uh, food, for example, their, their uh, some medicine, local medicine, and any other thing that uh, can be uh, sell on the, on the digital platform. So that basically for my, for my introduction, uh, Henry Ma, Henry, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pa Eddie. Uh, I know that you described the initiative for grassroots outreach because, as Pa Shige's finding showed, uh, lack of information has been uh, one uh, factor that uh, MSMEs have pointed out in their in their survey. Which brings us to Ibu Shinta Kamdani of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Following up on that point, Ibushinta, um, what measures can be done or what measures uh, is the chamber doing to increase the awareness among MSMEs of these assistance programs, as well as conveying to the government, you know, the views as to what measures would be used? You, Ibushinta. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. And I have to say that the survey really reflects um, the condition on the ground and the evolution of the uh, this adaptation for our, um, our SMEs. So I wanted to start by um, also mentioning that 
uh, is true. The constraint, although there's a lot of constraints and challenges facing by MSME during this uh, pandemic uh, period, but the biggest one is obviously the gas flow crisis and um, also the lack of capability to adjust to the shock in the domestic demand. Indonesian MSME actually are quite resilient, but their revenue highly depends on a people's mobilities and activities of the larger businesses. So through, through the industry supply chain, sales services to factory workers, commuters, and so forth, that's impact the business of the MSME. This, um, the pandemic protocols, which heavily aim on minimizing the people's mobility puts the MSME in a very tough position throughout this pandemic. On average, I think Indonesian MSME can only survive for about one month without any income. For the informal and micro businesses, it was even more severe since the, role, the rule of thumb was literally today's revenue is tomorrow's operating capital. The fact that Indonesia has low financial and um, legal, legal literacy also adds to MSME's difficulty to tap into the loans uh, from the banking services or also the assistance from government as word of mouth and community approach are still the main channel to disseminate news for assistance. Therefore, the MSME cannot really survive without some relaxation to mobility restriction, assistance in uh, paying the bills, utilities, rent, loan interest, tax, employee pay payrolls, um, etc. And assistance in capital regeneration and business transformation, primarily to also recover consumer through online sales platform, ranging from even simple as uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, e-commerce platform, as the ADB also found in the survey. So Kadin uh, has been working very closely with the government in providing um, what does it's needed for the uh, MSME? So uh, I think it was mentioned before in terms of the stimulus, both fiscal and non-fiscal um, incentive that's given to MSME. What I want to point out is some that's still on the work. So um, at the moment, uh, um, it's not granted yet, but we are also asking for the export subsidy for the MS uh, for the SMEs export and subsidy on export insurance. That's um, two things because we've been really much thinking um, that the SMEs that goes export will not be um, um, the export market will not be impacted uh, throughout this pandemic. So they need support on that. Also, we were looking into cash incentive for uh, SMEs per, um, that follow the compliance tax rate. So, for example, a full cash incentive with, uh, for those who, who are in tax compliance for the last two years. We also talk about income subsidy for SMEs workers, which have a PPGS compliance record. We talk also about logistic costs, uh, cash back mechanism to offset expensive logistic costs. We also talk about the reimbursement uh, training costs for SMEs, um, training for health protocol compliance, uh, and uh, uh, temporary loan, loan bridging program for the next three to six months. Um, these are some of the aspects that um, we were talking even as far as internet quota for micro businesses to utilize online business and so forth. Beyond the direct stimulus to MSME, I think pan stimulus packages, which um, effectively protects also the purchasing power of the lower middle income class, less band source, the income subsidy, also highly beneficial for the MSME recovery. Now, Kadin Indonesia also um, has been supporting the MSME business transformation and market expansion for future growth. So we're taking this opportunity for also to transform the MSME, including lowering the cost of starting business through the what we, um, I think you've mentioned before, the omnibus law or the, uh, the law of, uh, of job creation that really it's the point for transforming the uh, SMEs. That the biggest policy supports that Kadin initiate to empower the recovery is uh, um, lower also the administrative and financial burden for the MSME to be a formal business entity. So we would like to see more um, going into the formal sector and to 
invest energy invest as well as to build a supply chain cooperation with bigger co corporation and foreign business entity other support is also training on business management best practices and adaptation uh, against the pandemic we have what we call the academy where um, the small medium enterprise academy that were were been uh, working uh, throughout the pandemic also utilization of the e-commerce platform through um, we are now starting up the trading house uh, e-commerce system for um, SME as well as uh, other export uh, empowerment program as well. So uh, for effective implementation of uh, the PEN, the, the economic recovery uh, program, Tadin found that the clarity of business process to get government assistance for MSME and intensive consultation uh, uh, and communication, public communication with business primarily through business association is also very important to improve uh, MSME capability to tap into the stimulus. The size uh, of the stimulus cannot possibly provide all assistance needed due to the gap of the amount of the stimulus that can be provided versus the number. That's actually, I mean, I think this is also the key of the data. Uh, the num um, number of MSV that actually recorded in a data is also uh, an issue, a challenge. So, so uh, how much that can be um, uh, tapped into is something that uh, is still, um, an attack, uh, we need to pay attention. Now, the biggest problem also uh, is the general lack of clarity and information in the stimulus itself and the business process to tap into the stimulus program, how to apply one and so forth. Special note also, I would like to mention about the incentive for the loan stimulus for the, um, we call the capital, uh, working capital. I think this is to determine the amount of capital needed by average MSME as, as the range of business scale is very diverse and there is no consensus on how long uh, the operating capital loan can be provided. This creates also a uh, too diverse range on the amount of operating capital loan uh, should be provided for the MSME. Also, uh, micro and small businesses in Indonesia are single person businesses without a formal business entity. Many are like this. This, it might be considered a moral hazard uh, to grant loan for MSME only through um, the identity card, as there is no way government or financial institution can locate or prove the existence of business activities. To address this issue, Kadin finds that the intense, of course, uh, communication and consultation with business association is utmost important to continuously review the pen distribution mechanism and solve such technical or business process challenges to disseminate the pen stimulus. We also work uh, with a multi-channel public uh, dissemination session with local business, um, and uh, especially when we talk about with uh, OJK uh, on the POJK 11 and POJK 48, through um, also counseling session on the provincial, le provincial level, uh, um, the, uh, we have been uh, currently working on many of this. And I think for management of future crisis, it would be best if Indonesia can also provide more a centralized public information system and hotline in which business can also go for question or clarification. I think uh, if we see many of the issue also, um, again, on the banking on the banking side, is uh, the bank uh, is also worried about dissemination, uh, more loans and uh, capital for SMEs. And I think this is something we need to uh, pay attention. So that's just some of uh, my notes here. Thank you. Thank you, Ibushinka. Let me pose a follow-up question for Pashige. 28% uh, of the MSMEs were digital. Did you notice an increase in that proportion over the past year? And I guess to all panelists looking forward, uh, this pandemic has forced changes in behavior in order to reduce contact. And one way to deal with that would be through digitization. In this connection, a few months ago, ADB sponsored a knowledge event on digitization in services. Have you been seeing such uh, a development in MSMEs and what government measures or private sector measures can be implemented to foster such a transition? So uh, as a follow-up question to Pashige, 
whether there has been any such trend in the survey and, and a follow-up question to everyone, what measures can be done by both government and private sector to foster digitization? Okay, so thank you, so Henry. So just a quick response to uh, so your uh, questions. Uh, actually, so digital transformations were being uh, so inevitable actions for MSMEs to survive and so grow so, and there's a new normal so that promotes these so contactless societies. Uh, definitely the pandemic triggered MSMEs to go digital, so in the beginning stages of the pandemic. Uh, but the survey finding so reveals that digital transformations has yet uh, to be established stably so among MSMEs. Uh, so more concretely, uh, the extent of MSME's digital transformation is likely to correspond to the level of stringency of uh, containment so policies and so people's mobility. So in other words, so as the so policy stringency is strengthened, so it accelerates the so shift of MSME business models from conventional ways so with a personal contact to contactless so digital transactions. So meanwhile, as a policy stringency is lifted, so MSMEs that so shifted to online selling of so products or e-commerce uh, tend to shift back to so non-digital so traditional operations. That's very so interesting so findings uh, we, uh, we, uh, we got so from these recent uh, surveys in, in Indonesia and also other countries. Uh, I think this uh, for policy actions to stably uh, promote digital transactions by MSMEs, uh, the government uh, will need to so further so improve so ICT uh, infrastructure, so including these uh, enhanced internet connectivity so nationwide, and also uh, facilitate the MSMEs access to digital platforms for business and so finance, uh, including so equity crowdfunding and P2P lending like that and also provide the financial assistance on teleworking. So given that so many so still have faced the so difficulty in adapting to work from home arrangements, so also gradually so improving. So uh, there's so many things, so, but uh, I think that we need to uh, seriously, uh, carefully, so look at this evidence, uh, the level of this so digital is operated uh, so conditions of these MSMEs, and then so need to so consider these so more appropriate and feasible actions so from the government. So uh, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Pashige. Uh, uh, Eddie, would you care to follow up on that regarding uh, how MSMEs are coping with digitization and how we can help them move along? Yes, thank you, Henry. Yeah, actually, as you as we may aware that. Uh, Last year or last two years ago, when I was still in the Ministry of uh, Economic Cooperation, uh, Economic Affairs, I'm sorry, uh, the president already launched uh, what we call the Palaparing. Uh, it's the toll, toll, uh, toll for the broadband. Yeah. So basically, in terms of the infrastructure, as mentioned by CG, we don't have yet uh, the, the problem so far, of, of course. Uh, in some remote area, we still consider uh, the blank spot, and we have to uh, strengthen our our signal for them. But basically, uh, for the infrastructure, for the access of the payment, some subsidy already available in, for the uh, internet and the power supply for the electricity, and then of course we have the capacity building for the micro, especially uh, we collect them and register them, and then we onboarding them with the digital platform. We have done uh, three or four uh, memorandum of understanding with the with the player, with the e-commerce players, and also uh, we have the uh, our office, our minister already made some uh, MOU and limited the import goods that mostly dominated uh, uh, the the e-commerce uh, market in our country in uh, in Indonesia especially, so that we protect some of our MSMEs product so so that we uh, they can still get some cake of the e-commerce uh, properly. And in, the, in addition, actually, Ibu Sinta and Pa Adi already cover all of the, uh, the policy and uh, mostly of the policy of our uh, MSMEs uh, in this pandemic. I want to add uh, to the situation that now uh, we are relying on much on the 
government spending. So that uh, we we will be channeling uh, around 40% of government uh, budget uh, through our e-procurement office. So it will be 40% of eligible for the MSMEs. And in addition to for the question you mentioned to me, also we expand the credit uh, with zero guarantee. Yeah. So zero, uh, zero interest and for the super micro, super micro and with the uh, uh, zero guarantee up to the 100 uh, million rupiah. So that I think uh, some of my notes are regarding the digitalization. Of course, we are now working, uh, especially Ibu Sinta mentioned before about the data, yet uh, we are now preparing for one data for our MSMEs, uh, with, which is now uh, on preparation for this year under uh, the different deputy here. So that uh, will be next, next year, we'll be, we, we will have the good uh, database uh, and we can then uh, rejoin, re regaining and then uh, com compile of the available data from the different uh, uh, user of the MSMEs like Bansos, yeah, like also Bepum and the, the other program, which is now uh, ongoing and will be uh, run uh, by next year. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Henry. Thank you, pa Eddie. As a member of the audience pointed out, data can be a problem. As Pa Said pointed out, ADB is very willing to work with the government, and Pa Ashige's survey hopefully will be one step in in the data gathering that will uh, facilitate our our, our efforts. Uh, if I if I may pose a follow up question to Pa Adi Budiarso. Uh, even in the best of times, credit availability can be a problem for MSMEs, and it has and and this uh, this crisis has not been an exception. Uh, macroeconomic data show that credit growth remains weak. In your view, what is the outlook for uh, credit recovery uh, over the near term? Thank you, um, uh, Adi. Thank you very much, Henry. Uh, we witnessed that the in the back ten or probably. 20 years. The credit uh, support from the financial sector, sector has been quite tough. It's been decreasing. That means that the role of the financial sector to support the economy is not that. Uh, our, we are not reaching our, our highest potential yet. That means if we uh, mention MSMEs, 70% of them are still not inclusive. Based on the survey, the inclusive uh, OJK survey, I mean, uh, last year, it's just only 78%. That means we still have uh, worked very hard to uh, review and support. What number, Pa Adi? Please repeat. What, how many percent? 78%. Pa. Okay. So the target for financial inclusion is 90% by 24. Uh, 24. So uh, we must work very hard on, it, on this. And how to transmit uh, access to it. I would like to emphasize the digitalization. FinTech, for example. If we uh, review back on our current program, the existing program, we can only reach by probably 5 million MSMEs. Mm -hmm. But with FinTech, we can reach 16 million. So that means financial inclusion is matters. But in addition to that, it's also the literacy pa, pa Eddie and all the team yeah, and all the ADB team. We must work very hard to uh, expand the, yeah, some of the findings which Mr. Sigiro san uh, mentioned is on the access and even the availability of the basic data. The, based on the OJK survey, literacy of the government in terms of the financial literacy, just only 30%. And quite pity on us, on insurance and pension, it's just only 10%. That's why no doubt that currently insurance and pension just only uh, the capitalization based on GDP, we only quite uh, as low as 11%. If you may compare to uh, Malaysia, for example, they already have 80% uh, of its GDP for insurance and pension uh, industry capitalization. That means Indonesia must uh, tap the uh, benefit of democratic dividend to work very hard to support the financial sector. So that means from our, uh, you know, behavior or our culture. So that, that's what we are uh, trying to uh, promote is the literacy and also transforming our culture to uh, save more and make use of the financial 
support through intermediation to support their business. And that is even possible with the digital issues and the acceleration of it. So that's my comment, Bob. If we may uh, try to transfer credit, we must also improve first the literacy, the financial inclusion, and now we try to collaborate among authorities currently to transmit the potential uh, ample of the liquidity to uh, improve the, the MSMEs. Thank you very much. Uh, one uh, very, very important points uh, about credit and literacy and access. Uh, unfortunately, we have to be closing soon uh, on this uh, fascinating discussion. We would like to give the last words to Ibu Shinta, if you could please give a brief summary or closing statement. Thank you. Over to you, Ibu Shinta. So I would like to say uh, three points that's important. I think uh, our MSME needs to be attention on the market access. And I think this also including the digitalization that we talk about. And we have to be very concrete with program that we provided where at MSME, for example, we have were working uh, with with um, with Shopee for the for market platform and so forth on the access of their products. Um, also, uh, creating products that uh, are ready, and I think this is this needs a lot of assist assistance as well. The second aspect, of course, we talk about the financing. I think uh, for for this the future. Uh, PAN needs to be directed to creating a more smooth supply of liquidity to business actors, especially the MSME, with more affordable borrowing costs so that the national economic recovery can be accelerated. And I think uh, finally, um, on the assistance on the capacity building that will be continuing on, especially during the pandemic for the transformation of uh, their businesses, I think the uh, increasing uh, their skills and so forth. I think this is very, very important on the training ca uh, capacity that needs uh, to be um, uh, driven more for our MSME. Thank you. Terima kasih, Ibu Shinta, Pa Adi, Pa Edi, Pa Shige. Thank you very much also to the audience for your participation and questions. The, uh, the AIW series continues. And the next topic is going to be promoting healthy and active aging. It will be on September 7th, 3 p.m. Manila time or 2 p.m. Jakarta time. It promises to be another interesting discussion in the AIW series. Thank you very much to everyone. Stay safe. Have a good day.